I'm going to talk about Ibrahim or Abraham or Abraham and his tradition because I consider myself uh, as a follower of Ibrahim so alayhi salam and there has been a lot of uh, debate or discourse about Ibrahim and Abrahamic tradition in the media which is mostly political so that's not my angle but since I'm interested in Ibrahim Abraham and his tradition I'm going to make different videos describing my thought or exploring my thoughts about different aspects of Abrahamic tradition and I'm going to start with uh, which tradition is more uh, which tradition is nearer to Ibrahim on which tradition is actually should be called Abrahamic tradition or deserve to be called Abrahamic tradition because there are at least three contestants so there is Judaism there is Christianity And this is Islam, the last one. So in this, uh, I'll try to keep it more short, uh, short this video, and then I'll explain in different videos things which I haven't explained properly in this one. Now, to start with, I'm going to talk from within my tradition. So although I know a bit about Christianity independently of my tradition, um, and for sure I know way more about Christianity than Judaism um, from outside my tradition. Still, uh, my knowledge of Christianity cannot be described as, you know, scholarly. Or... So that's why I'll, I'll try to raise this issue from within my tradition. So I'm not claiming anything. For other tradition they can speak for themselves but I will be speaking for about them uh, in this video but from within my own tradition um, so that's the important proviso um, okay so and obviously what we say is always um, contingent or in the sense that you know as we think more as we search for truth more we change our opinion and we should change our opinion I think that's part of Abrahamic tradition because Ibrahim was according to Quran anyway totally committed to truth and as the followers, followers of Ibrahim, we should be committed to truth as well. And commitment to truth, I think at least one of the things which it implies is to, you know, when we see that our arguments, we see a better argument, we shouldn't be hesitant to change our opinions. Anyway, so Judaism, let's start with the oldest one. I think that's how I write it, hopefully. My spellings are atrocious at times. Um, Judaism. So, as a famous historian of medieval technology, um, 
what was his name, Lynn White, Lynn White famously said that Christianity and Islam are Jewish heresies. So that's one way of looking at it because Judaism came first. Um, and Christianity second and Islam third. But as the Brahmic tradition itself tells us that what comes first is not necessarily always right. And in fact, for as far as Islam is concerned, uh, and Quran is very clear about it. Um, and I'll come back to that. Both Christianity and Jewish are Islamic heresies in the sense that Islam is a much older tradition. And this is the tradition of Abraham according to Quran anyway. That's why he is called Muslim throughout Quran. Hanif and Muslim Hanif mean totally committed. One of its meaning. So he totally committed Muslim. And Muslim in the sense of, you know, devoted to Muslim or Islam is total surrender to the total surrender to to, to God or to the truth, same thing, because God is the truth, al -Haq. Okay, so go <laughs> we should go back to Judaism. Uh, so Judaism, in what sense Judaism can have a claim? Okay, to start with, the first claim is I guess uh, for the lack of better word, ethnic in the sense that Abraham is the forefather or a father of the Jewish people. And that's true, so if that's the claim, that's why they are more um, deserving to be called the Abrahamic faith or Abrahamic tradition or the true representative of those tr that tradition, then so be it. But... Uh, um, The problem with this argument is that they are not the only one, even the only ones. So the Hebrews, Jewish, because this come from Isaac, but there's another one, Ishmael. Or Ismail as we. So they are not the only one, even if they try to forget to smile. So they are not. They are the, not the only descendants uh, of Ibrahim. So if the argument is just that, then it's uh, the others have as much, or if not more, claim to Ibrahim than than the Jewish tradition. Okay, so. The second um, main claim is as to monotheism. And um, and Jews, uh, Jew Judaism is uh, 
monotheistic religion there is no doubt about that but yeah but there are other monotheistic religions um, as well so they can claim to be in the tradition of Ibrahim as well um, and from an Islamic point to view although we consider Jews as monotheistic but their monotheism is limited um, in this in from Islamic perspective in the sense that uh, they um, Islamic concept of monotheism total sovereignty God um, which not just only meant considering God as one on the intellectual level but also on the levels of desires and on the level of social and cultural traditions and Islam does um, um, Quran at least does uh, criticize at least some Jews for treating their rabbis as God in the sense that they give them total legislative powers well beyond um, the power of God and uh, so 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 that's the second point um, the main objections against uh, other main objections against Judaism is the tribal nature of Judaism and particularistic they try to limit Abrahamic Abrahamic tradition to a particular people. In fact, this tribalism is so deep that also within the tribe of Hebrews, it only favors a certain line. Um, and not all the Hebrew lines of Abraham. Um, on the other hand, according to Quran, um, um, Abraham, God made Abraham. The Imam that is the leader not just for Jews or just for Hebrews but Linnas for the people all the people um, and when you look at um, Abraham's or Ibrahim's uh, Law, if you see that this universalism is is very prominent, um, First in his search for truth, um, and leaving his family, his tribe, in Iraq for the sake of truth, really. So tribalism really goes against um, Abrahamic tradition and then he immigrated to 
an alien land and makes it his home but he has connection with a lot of different and so he went to Egypt Arabia he settled his uh, son Ismail and then around Palestine Isaac and their descendants so he Ibrahim as far as we understand in our tradition is a universalist not a particularist he is not a tribalist he is the leader absolutely the leader of all the people that's what Quran says Linna Siman Ibrahim was God made Ibrahim the Imam for all the people okay so in that sense uh, we feel that um, um, Judaism although it's you know it claims to be Abrahamic tradition it can't be equated with Abrahamic tradition and some of its uh, traditions are obviously against the Abrahamic, original Abrahamic tradition or actually Abraham's uh, own life and his own views etc. Now when it comes to Christianity let's say the first point can be Christianity can claim an ethnic connection to uh, Abraham as well because Jesus Christ um, um, is the son of Abraham he is from Hebrews he is a Jewish teacher rabbi so in that sense he is um, um, connected to Abrahamic tradition himself and Christianity by being the followers of Christ Jesus Christ they are connected to Abrahamic tradition in that sense there's no doubt about that but then this can't be exclusive because Jews are also connected etc but more importantly I think what um, Christianity has uh, like gives an edge to Christianity um, universalism um, in the sense that it realizes that Abraham's uh, message is for all the people And on this basis in Quran it points uh, Christians are or certain types of Christians who were called Nasara um, or Nazarites um, they are said to be nearer to Muslims than any other and the reason for that is this universalism which is designated by the word love um, so that that uh, for sure gives Christianity an edge over Judaism because it represents universalism of Abraham his commitment to truth um, the third but what goes against Christianity is monotheism As far as Judaism concer concerned, it's for sure, it's clearly a, a monotheistic tradition. Um, but even though, from an Islamic perspective, its monotheism falls short at points. But regardless, it's a monotheistic tradition. On the other hand, Christianity, although it claims to be a monotheistic tradition, it's um, notion of God incarnate 
goes against the notion of transcendent God. Um, which is the legacy of Abraham. And the last point also, which goes against um, by rejecting the law of Torah. Altogether, not just rabbinic uh, excesses, but altogether, or well, mostly, except for those moral teachings and Ten Commandments, etc. And it sort of um, accepted Jewish um, claim that it was a tribal. Uh, Abraham's God, Abraham God's and his law or the tribal law. So that's why when it went for universal universalism, it rejected that tribal law. But for us, in our point, from our viewpoint, from Islamic viewpoint, we reject the notion that Jewish God is a tribal God, Abraham's God is a tribal God, and the law of Torah is a tribal law. Some of it might be, you know, for a specific conditions, but a lot of it is the universal law. And we keep commitment to that law through uh, the continuation of uh, Islamic law or fiqh. Um, so... We fault the Christianity for rejecting the law. We don't fault for because love without law is contentless, shapeless, and that leads to the things which Christians have, things which are far away from the Abrahamic tradition. Okay, now let's come to Islam. Now there are many, many reasons, but I'll just get to. So the ethnic reason is there, because Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam belong to Quraysh and they are from Ismail's and Quran is clear about that. Um, so he, he, he is the son of Ismail, son of Ibrahim. So he has all the um, nearness to Ibrahim ethnically speaking. And then be Islam. It's monotheistic in the full sense of the word. It is universal in both considers Abrahamic law or Abrahamic legal tradition as universal as well. The traditional love. Uh, no tribalism. Etc. But more specifically Islam is actually, if you look at it, it's very Abraham, Abraham centric. In the sense that if you look at the five pillars of Islam, that's, that's the heart of Islam. Pillars of Islam. Um, so you have um, first is the testimony of faith, which is the monotheistic. So that's where Ibrahim makes one God, total allegiance to it. But then you have the ritual. Worship, daily ritual worship. People call it prayer, but it is not really just prayer. It's worship, all Hebrew worship. Three um, is your 
part of your wealth you give to. So there's, I mean, charity is a horrible word, but I mean, it's the card. Um, so you give to poor and the needy, and then you have Hajj, and you have uh, fasting month, fasting. So these are five pillars of um, Islamic faith. Um, um, now the, the first one is obviously testimony, this monotheism. But if you go to ritual for daily ritual worship, And it's communal, basically. I mean, unless you don't have anybody else to worship with. Um, in the communal worship, and it is five times a day. And when you are finishing your every communal prayer, in the last, in the second and in the last, when you sit down, you send salutation on salutations and greetings on. You do it twice. And mercy of God on two people Abraham and Muhammad, and not just him, Abraham and his sons or his descendants, all his righteous descendants, all Hebrews. All Jews who were righteous and his followers, all his righteous followers, and the same with Muhammad. So every day, millions of people chanting the name of Abraham with my Prophet Muhammad. and send mercy of God on him, his salutations, their salutations, and greetings. And they ask God to send his greetings and his mercy and salutation on Abraham, his descendants, his followers. And this is done day at least five times a day in ritual worship. And I'm not even counting individual worships. Uh, that's quite amazing, quite amazing. There's nobody else on this earth who sing the name of Abraham and his descendants and his followers. That is a tradition daily, several times. Um, I, I don't know that much about Judaism, but I can assure you that no Jewish tradition today or Christian tradition can even <laughs> uh, dream to match it. And apart from this, there's a whole pillar of Islam, it's called Hajj. And this whole there are millions of people every year go to Mecca and basically they retrace or trace the foot steps of Abraham. Basically Hajj is a ritual to Commemorate 
the life of Abraham really and his family. So the whole pillar of Islam is focus on Abraham. That's I don't think the either Judaism or Christianity have it. Um, it just affect you can't deny it. Um, and um, so it is in Mecca where he had settled his part of his family, Ismail and his and the Kaaba was built by Abraham and Ismail and it's one of the most ancient house built for the worship of God and historians say that all Hebrews used to go and visit Kaaba on uh, including Jews until later time when some Arabs introduced idolatry in this house of God and Prophet Muhammad basically came to purge um, the house of God of those uh, idols and so Abraham, so whole Mecca and Kaaba, that's so in and then there are two um, mountains, Safa and Marwa, where you run between them. That's where Hagar, the wife of um, Abraham, and mother of Ismail ran searching for water for Ismail. So whole Hajj is, is in the memory of Ibrahim and is Ibrahim centric really. And because God had made Ibrahim as his friend, he ordered um, his slaves to commemorate every year the memory of his friend and remember him and remember his mission and his journey. Uh, and there is a Mokama Ibrahim where people stand, remember him during the Hajj station of Ibrahim. It's there even today where Ibrahim had a stand with a smile and prayed to God for the success of his mission, his universal mission. So that's why I, I think um, Islam is the most deserving tradition to, to claim to be the continuation of the tradition of Abrahamic um, faith, faith, faith is not a really good word, but so if, is, if there is Abrahamic faith today, that is Islam. That's why Quran clearly says that Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but a totally committed Muslim. That is the one. Committed to God, to the truth. So that's uh, it for me from this, uh, and we'll continue this in, on this playlist. Uh, and I'll break down and talk about different things where, on which I only had, uh, you know, talked very briefly here. See you.